Silver Star is the signature ride at Europa Park. It is a B&M hyper coaster, one of the largest out there actually, and it's probably the first ride you're going to see when you get to the park because it is directly over the parking lot. Like Universal, there's moving walkways that you'll take to get to the front entrance, and they run parallel to Silver Star's main hills. So as a result, you can't see too much of this ride from the park, but it does make a bold first impression. It also happens to be one of the least themed rides at Europa Park, which is very interesting because the park as a whole is all about theming. This ride, though, not so much. I always found it interesting that the two most thrilling rides at Europa Park were rides that weren't built by the Mach family. But whatever, that's besides the point. This is my full in-depth review of Silver Star. I'm going to walk you through the ride experience and give my thoughts as well as a final score at the end of the video. So let's jump right in. One of the first things I want to mention is that this is one of the largest B&M hypers ever built. It stands 240 feet in the air and hits almost 80 miles an hour, over 5,000 feet of track. So it's a pretty long ride. Duration is not an issue here. You get quite a lot of ride in this roller coaster. Many rides at Europa Park feature a sponsorship. Silver Stars is Mercedes Benz, so you'll find lots of car related things as you go into the entrance and out the exit. But because this is a BM hyper, there isn't really any theming during the ride, which is totally fine. It doesn't need it. You start off with a nice long chain lift up to the top, gives you a great view of the parking lot to your left. When you hit the top, you actually don't really get a view to your right because there are some panels that are below blocking the view from the rest of the park. I'd love if someone knows why those panels are there, they could comment down below about it because I have no clue. My first guess was a sound barrier, but it's facing the rest of the park, so I have no idea what it could do. I only got two rides on Silver Star, and both times I sat towards the back of the train. There are nine rows on this coaster, which is actually pretty interesting because a lot of B&M hypers, the newer ones specifically, are opting for shorter trains. So this is one that has a nine car train, that classic B&M clamshell restraint, no seat belts or anything, and not the staggered seating either, like the ones that you'd find on Shambhala, the other BM hyper in Europe. That one, of course, is a lot newer than this one. But in terms of layout, when you hit that first drop, you're descending at almost a 70 degree angle. Not bad at all. 220 foot drop in total. And something Silver Star does at the bottom is bank to the left. I personally thought that was interesting because a lot of BM hypers opt for a higher up turnaround. You look at something like Mako, Intimidator, these other BM hypers with an L shape layout. This one, that is not the case. You start banking left lower to the ground and then rise up into the gradual peak of the airtime hill. So the shaping of that first hill is a little wonky. It's very different than what you would expect. But from here out, the rest of the first half of this layout is pretty standard. We have two massive airtime hills, a turnaround at the far side. If you've run Mako at SeaWorld Orlando, the first half of Silver Star is almost identical. Not quite. There's a few slight differences, but that was definitely one of the rides that stood out to me when I was riding this. I was like, oh wow, it does what Mako did. Except here's the thing, Mako's a lot newer. It really perfected that design. This was not a glass smooth ride like you'd get on Mako or Shambhala. Those two are my favorite b &M hypers and unfortunately Silver Star was one of my least favorites. The first half of this ride didn't do a whole lot for me, which is a stark contrast from the first half of Mako, where the first half I think is fantastic and the strongest part of the ride. Silver Star? Not so much. I think the second half is really where this ride shines. Don't get me wrong, Silver Star has airtime, but it wasn't anything crazy. Frankly, the best airtime moment on this ride is dropping off of the mid-course brake run, which when you consider that, that's the beginning of the second half of the ride. The first half has some nice floater. Unfortunately, there are some trims on these airtime hills, and when you hit that mid-course brake run, you do slow down a little bit. So I can't say I was a humongous fan of that. I mean, there's plenty of B&M hypers that have mid-course brake runs, so that isn't an issue. I mean, it allows them to run three trains on this thing. But those little trims on the big airtime hills? I don't know. I mean, from a certain point of view, they aren't that bad, but I do think it's something you'll notice when you ride. So let's jump into the second half of the ride. So as I mentioned, this is when I think it really shines. The drop off the mid course is fantastic. That's my favorite moment of the ride. And then you go into a left-handed upwards helix. This is a pretty forceful moment. Don't be surprised if you gray out here. After you twist out of that, you drop into some smaller airtime hills. I think the floater here is actually stronger than on the larger hills. And I know I'm not the only person who actually prefers the smaller hills on B&M Hypers to the larger hills. I think the airtime feels a bit more sudden, just more fun in general, especially if you have some room between you and the restraint. And I think this is where it kind of gets wacky. Silver Star then goes into something different. It does 
a rapid S-bend into the break run. It reminded me of the wacky ending on Goliath at Six Flags Over Georgia. Not the same thing, but both of those have kind of an odd end to the ride. And it's fun, you know? It's something different. One of the things that people always complain about with B&M Hypers is, well, they feel too similar. And I feel like that's a valid concern. Yes, they're popular because they're almost universally loved rides. Maybe not necessarily towards enthusiasts all the time, but they're big crowd pleasers. Silver Star is a crowd pleaser. Was it my favorite ride in the park? Definitely not. I only got two rides in on this. Would I have ridden it more? Sure. But I was much more interested in getting re-rides on Woden Timber Coaster and even Blue Fire. Blue Fire didn't overall impress me, but at least it was something different than what I was used to experiencing. Silver Star, I mean, to put it bluntly, is one of my least favorite B&M Hypers. I'd put it right there with Apollo's Chariot on the bottom of the list. And it's not just because it's super rattly. Yes, it is. I know not everyone is bothered by that. It is something that I personally noticed during the ride, and I think it took away from the experience, but I didn't think that the airtime was as strong, and it even felt a little sluggish at time through the layout. I think this ride is a good example that size is not everything. As I mentioned in the beginning, this is one of the largest B&M hyper coasters, but is it the best? Not even close. So for its final score, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. I know there's people here who have ridden it that would probably rank it a lot higher. This ride didn't do too much for me. Part of me honestly thought about giving it a 5. Just because I didn't care too much after I wrote it, I was like, eh, okay, whatever. Next. Perhaps it's just because I've ridden so many B&M Hypers already as it is that that shock value isn't quite there for me because I know what kind of experience I'm getting before I ride. So I do recognize that my circumstances might be slightly different than others who will be experiencing this attraction. But as a coaster critic, I take into account a lot of the other similar ride experiences around the world. And the fact is that this ride underperformed for me. Not quite as much as some others like Hollywood Dream. I think that one left me even more underwhelmed than Silver Star. But I do think that there are definitely better attractions out there even within the same park but those are my thoughts on silver star at europa park in germany let me know down in the comments below if you've had the opportunity to experience this attraction if you agree with my thoughts and if you disagree let me know why down below and if you're new to the channel be sure to hit that subscribe button for more coaster reviews from parks all around the world so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you next time